The Chicago North Shore Milwaukee Railroad is considered to be the greatest of inner urbans amongst most of the rail fan community. With its earliest history dating back to 1895 with the formation of the Bluff City Electric Street Railway Company, and until the railroad's final day of revenue operation on January 21st, 1963, it proved to be one of the fastest and most efficient electric rail operations in the United States. In 1919, the North Shore was granted trackage rights to operate over the Chicago L for 12 miles from Howard Street to Roosevelt Road, with North Shore trains usually operating on the Otter Express tracks to avoid interference with the L trains. Northbound Milwaukee Limited makes a station stop at Adams and Wabash. The second car is a former motorized diner, number 409. A four-car train of Baldies arrives on the outer track as a six-car train of 4000s departs on the inner track. A 1920-built Cincinnati car leads this four-car Mundelein train through State and Lake Street Station, which was the only station on the loop that North Shore trains did not stop at. Merchandise Mart, a four-car train of Baldies approaches Tower 18 and meets a northbound North Shore train. Howard Street, a northbound Electroliner arrives into the station as a southbound four-car Evanston Express departs. The Electroliner was the North Shore's answer to win back passenger traffic during the 1940s. The two train sets numbered 801-802 and 803-804 were built in 1941 by the St. Louis Car Company and was one of the first pieces of interurban equipment to be equipped with air conditioning. These state-of-the-art train sets were capable of reaching 110 miles per hour on the run from Chicago to Milwaukee. However, the timing was so quick that the trains were overrunning crossing gates, so they ended up being limited to 90 miles per hour. Dining car service was also offered and the Electro Burger became the signature dish of the North Shore Line. Looking east from Ridge Avenue, a northbound train leaves Howard Street and passes a southbound. This area was a typical meeting point for the hourly Milwaukee Chicago Limiteds. From the platform of the Main Street Station, an Electroliner heads north.
A southbound silver liner departs Harms Woods. The bridge in the background is the Edens Expressway. A northbound freight hustles through Harms Woods behind one of the North Shore's 1927 battery steeple caps. A southbound electroliner ducks under the Edens Expressway. A southbound Mundelein to Chicago train comes off of the Libertyville division and onto the Skokie Valley route. The second car in the consist is a former parlor car. The Libertyville division was a branch line that ran 8.6 miles from Lake Bluff to Mundelein parallel to Illinois Route 176. With connections to the old shoreline route at Lake Bluff and with the Skokie Valley route at Green Bay and South Upton Junction. At Greenhouse, a northbound Mundelein train comes west under the Tri-State Tollway. A northbound train performs a touch-and-go stop at Libertyville. The passenger steps off the train as it's still moving at a crawl. As the motorman looks back, he sees he gets off and waves and continues on his way. A northbound train approaches Mundelein in the vicinity of the St. Mary's Station. A single car departs Mundelein heading back south. Back at South Upton on the Skokie Valley route, a single car silver liner has a meet with a four car train. Southbound pair of silver liners arrive and depart Lake Bluff. Nineteen forty one Oregon Electric Freight Motor four fifty nine leads a northbound freight through Lake Bluff. Uh... 
North and southbound Electroliners have a meet at North Chicago Junction, where the old shoreline route joins the Skokie Valley route for the run up to Milwaukee. <laughs> The shoreline route ran from Linden Avenue and Wilmette to North Chicago Junction parallel to Sheridan Road and the Old Line subdivision of the Chicago and Northwestern. Freight interchange with the CNNW was made at North Chicago, although freight service was not permitted to operate south of Highland Park. Shoreline service was discontinued in 1955 in favor of maintaining the faster Skokie Valley route opened in 1926. We are on board a northbound train at Linden Avenue as it turns west onto Greenleaf Avenue. One of the main reasons for the decline and eventual abandonment in service on the shoreline route was the street running along Greenleaf Avenue. The mile that the railroad ran along Greenleaf Avenue was particularly slow as the city of Wilmette imposed a 15 mile per hour speed restriction on the railroad with 8 miles an hour at all cross streets. Our northbound train stops at Forest Avenue in Wilmette. A southbound train turns east onto Greenleaf Avenue at Wilmette Station. This could very well be the consist that was ridden north in the previous shots coming back south. Two trains could not pass on this curve. Southbound trains had priority if two trains encountered each other here at the same time. The mile of street running along Greenleaf Avenue was a favorite location for rail fans photographing the shoreline route. A southbound train leaves Forest Avenue Station in Wilmette and crosses Lake Avenue. North and southbound trains meet at Kenilworth. The fountain in the background had been donated by predecessor Chicago and Milwaukee Electric. A northbound train departs Kenilworth. 156 was one of three cars in this particular paint scheme. We get one last ride on the shoreline route along Greenleaf Avenue. An equipment deadhead comes through the North Chicago Junction Depot off of the old shoreline route. The old line as far as Highwood continued to be maintained to provide the railroad access to Highwood shops. This view of the same train at Lake Bluff in 1961 shows some of the shoreline route trackage that is still in service after the 1955 abandonment. Southbound Deadhead rolls through Lake Forest heading for Highwood. Highwood was the location of the main shops and headquarters for the Chicago, North Shore, and Milwaukee Railroad. And here we see two cars outside the shop building getting serviced before we get a panoramic view of the main facility. This lavish building housed the main offices of the North Shore. At West Yard in Highwood, we see car 702 along with line car 604. Trailers 192 and 187 are seen sitting at East Yard in Highwood. Also in the yard is this former North Shore TOFC flat. Equipment is shuffled around West Yard in Highwood. 
A group of boots from Great Lakes wait to board a southbound train as it arrives into North Chicago Junction. The second car is trailer 197, nearing the end of its career by this point. Note the poor condition of its platform door. A northbound train comes up the hill from North Chicago Junction at Valley Junction as Freight Motor 459 waits on the bypass track. After the Silver Liners clear, the 459 continues north. After dropping off newspapers at Edison Court Station, a pair of silver liners depart northbound crossing Washington Street. All is quiet at the station again as the newspaper bundles are sorted for delivery. A single car comes off the high platform track as a southbound train arrives. The single silver liner will be added to the front of the two-car train for the rest of the run to Chicago. Here we get a good view of the interior of a standard North Shore inner urban car, including the hot water stove. This is the interior of a standard car company silver liner. The silver liner paint, although looking like stainless steel fluting, is just painted to simulate the texture. Car 719 looks freshly washed as it sits in the yard at Edison Court. Zion Station is at the midpoint of the run from Chicago to Milwaukee. A pair of silver liners leave Zion heading north. Now on the Wisconsin side of the state line, a four-car train departs Kenosha. Linkert Road in Racine, a five-car northbound train has a meet with a southbound electroliner. Mm -hmm. At Racine, a trio of silver liners depart heading north. An electroliner heads south at Drexel Boulevard, north of Carrollville.
A southbound train goes under the Lakeside Beltline as it heads out of Milwaukee. A northbound Electroliner flies over the Milwaukee Road just south of Oklahoma Avenue. A pair of silver liners head south as they approach the bridge over Oklahoma Avenue. Harrison Street Shops was the northernmost servicing point for the North Shore Line, and a variety of equipment can be seen outside the shop as Silver Liner 755 gets a wash. Line Car 604 is seen moving on to the yard lead at Harrison Street prior to the passage of a southbound Electroliner. Six oh four follows the Electroliner south out of Harrison. A single car crosses Harrison Avenue to begin almost three miles of street running into the Milwaukee Terminal. This telephoto shot shows that the trip along 5th Street is not completely flat as this two-car train heads south. train stops at 6th and National to let off passengers. January 2023 marks the 60th anniversary of the abandonment of the North Shore Line. These sequences were shot on 8mm film between 1955 and 1961, and show why even over half a century later the North Shore Line is still considered to be the greatest of interurbans. <laughs>